we've reached the point of the podcast where we talk with the man, the myth, the legend at XFL Gym, CFL Gym, X League Gym, to his number one fan gym. The gym. All of this is true. All of this is 100% true. First of all, I just want to say congratulations, man. 3 0, sitting on top of the AFC, on top of the NFL. You have to be just on cloud nine right now, my friend. I'm Feel living it. up in all types of football except for college football where my team stinks. Hey, buddy, you know what? I realized something on Sunday night, Sunday Sunday afternoon, about 3 p.m. Central time. Lions are going to suck. They're going to win six games this year. But they're going to cover a bunch. You know what, dude? I just want them to win. I, I, I know. I was talking I, with another Lions fan. It's like, I'm sick of covering so many spreads. I want to win, damn it. And... Um, Mel Tucker hustled Michigan State out $10 million a year, and now we're signed to him for a couple more years, and we're going to suck. So uh, He's fire. like the discount version of a Jimbo Fisher. He swindled Texas A&M into a 10-year bajillion-dollar contract, and Mel Tucker swindled you guys into a massive contract after one good year. I mean, how much does Jimbo Fisher... What, do you want to know what his buyout is? He's in. Jimbo Fisher makes a year. He is earning $9 million. Yes. Yes. It is insane. Mel Tucker. Um, the third component is additional. Oh, my God. He is a nine. So he's $9.5 million. $95 million over 10 years. It's insane. I mean, Mel Tucker buyout. It's, yeah. it's pretty. No buyout terms. Come on. <laughs> um. So here's Jimbo Fisher's. Uh, they didn't pick some arbitrary number that the school would agree to pay him if they fired him by some arbitrary date, as we see with many other schools. Rather, if they fire Fisher without cause, the university owes him every penny remaining on his contract. Oh, dude, the $95 million by Mel Tucker is fully guaranteed. Yeah, so so is Jimbo's. It's stupid. All right, so we're not here to talk about bad college football contracts. We're here to talk about um, CFL, and I believe <gasps> I believe Jimbo was a uh, cool comp collective 3-0 and last week. I was feeling real good last so, week. So, uh, you know, we're going to bring up these lines from our friends over at PointsBet. Um, mm. Mm. So, mm. line number one. We're going to Saskatchewan getting eight over under a 48 and a half against the Blue Bombers who are coming off a bye after losing by 17 to the Tiger Cats. This one's tough. Uh, so it all comes down to what do you view Saskatchewan? What, do, what? How do you frame the Rough Riders? Do you view them as a team that would crumble under the pressure because they do have pressure to just make the playoffs potentially. I think they're pretty far behind in the standings. It's going to be real tough for them. But the Bombers, are they're kind of already locked in. They lose to weird teams. I don't think the Riders are a team that the Bombers overlooked. They kind of love just, just like sunning them and just making them look like fools. I lean the Bombers minus the eight. I think the Riders start to kind of crumble under all this. I think the offensive line is still an issue. And I just, I don't know. This is a bad game. Smart move is probably to stay away. Or take the over. Maybe take the over. But, like, Cody Fajardo could have games where he just, like, looks terrible and doesn't score any points. Like, this could very easily be, like, a Winnipeg 32 uh, Saskatchewan, like, 10. Yeah. So sometimes the best bet is no bet. And Jim and I are saying, you know what? Friday night, kick back a few cocktails after dinner, go to a happy hour, you know, get a blooming onion at Outback Steakhouse, and then shift your attention to the 930 game. We got That's Ottawa game. getting seven over under 46 and a half, money line plus 215. Talk dirty to me, Jimbo. Who, who, who are we leading here? So my just if you're not overthinking it, Ottawa on the road versus Ottawa at home. You take Ottawa on the road as a dog. They're feisty. Nick Arbuckle looks pretty good. Um, 
I like the over in this game quite a bit. I think BC's Lion, the, the BC Lions offense is better with Vernon Adams. I think it's competent. They've shown that they can score on a good defense in Calgary. So I like the over in this game. I like Ottawa um, as an offense as well. They have a lot of good weapons. And uh, they're on the road. So I like the Red Blacks as a feisty dog here, still playing for something. Sprinkle a little bit on that money line, maybe. Um, yeah, it's... Everything that I say about Ottawa as a team in general only applies to them on the road. So this this checks out. I, I like Ottawa here. I'll take the seven. I'll take the plus 215. And I'll, I'll definitely take the over minus 40, over 46 and a half. I like that move. I'm trying to look back at the writers. Uh, it's the last time they played the Bombers. They've only played the Bombers once, the, uh, twice this season. One game it would have gone under. One it would have gone way over. But the Bombers did score 54 in the one it would have went over. Oh. So. <laughs> The one that went over, balled out. Uh, so here on this one, Jim and I are both on the seven uh, with the Red Blacks, both on the over 46 and a half. We both like the plus 215. Now let's shift our attention to Saturday, October. I got, dude, I, I, Jim, I have to tell you, man, October is my favorite month. Man. I love it. It's October. a great month. I love October. You know, I love the like the weather, like the end of September and all of October. The weather's like perfect. For me, it's shorts and hoodie season. Which I, mean, I love rocking a hoodie and shorts, and it's the the weather's changing and it's spooky. See, you everyone watches scary movies. I fucking love horror movies. It's a great time. Pump, I I love pumpkin flavor stuff. I love candy corn. Uncle Rico's birthday is in October. Just one of the best months of the year. Let's just call good it. month. Good fucking month. Uh we got Montreal laying three and a half over under fifty four and a half money line here for the Elks is plus one forty four. I think we're gonna have a disagreement on this one, Jim. Where, where I think you- we are. Well, like I'm not gonna take Montreal minus the three and a half. I think the Elks can cover that spread, but I don't think the Elks have a shot of winning this game. It's the Elks at home. They're gonna make it fifteen in a row. They haven't won at home since two thousand nineteen. You know what they say, Jim. All good things must come to an end. Give me the Alex plus 144. I'll take the over 54 in this game. All right. So I'm going to be on the Alex plus three and a half. Jim's on the Alex plus three and a half. We're both on the over. No, 54. I'm not officially saying the Alex plus three and a half. I think there is a legit shot that they could lose by like a 10 points. All right. So you, you are taking the over. <sighs> I'm taking the over. All right. So Jim is on the over 54. Uncle Rico is on the Alex plus three, three and a half. And the over of 144. Jim is on the – no, I'm on – sorry. Uncle Rico's on the plus three and a half and the money line plus 144. And the over of 54. Jim is on the Montreal and Edmonton over of 54. Now let's shift our attention to the last game. Interesting game here. We got Toronto Lane getting five and a half over under 52 and a half plus 185 on the money line. Toronto's coming off a 45 to 15 just shellacking of the Redbacks. Stan Peters, you know, they they beat the uh BC 25-11. They're technically a half game back here. They're nine and five. BC is nine and four. Um interesting situation here. These teams played each other way back in August, uh, the end of August. Close game, different quarterback for the Stamps. And the Argos were still looking kind of chaotic, but the Stamps only won 22 to 19. Both these teams have kind of rounded into form. I have them right now in my top three in my power rankings for the CFL. I think that's too many points. Even on the road, I like this Toronto team. That offense is cooking, they got weapons. Yes, Calgary's defense is better. I love the over in this game. I know it's high, but I still like it. I like Toronto as a dog. I was sprinkling a little bit on that money line too. So let me ask you this. Now this may this is maybe may crazy. The standings are this. I'm looking at the standings right here. Rough Riders six and eight. BC is nine and four. Stan Peters nine and five. If the Rough Riders lose, are they they're basically out of it, right? They basically have to win out and hope that Calgary and BC both drop some games. So if they lose and the Lions lose or the Lions win, would there be movement in this five and a half, you think? Or do you think it's just gonna hold study? So if the Lions, if the BC Lions lose, then there might be some movement because then Calgary, like Calgary needs BC to lose in order to get home field advantage. Um mm-hmm. 
they basically need to win out and hope Calgary, hope uh, the Lions drop a game or two. So this is a must win for Calgary. But like Toronto also has Montreal kind of nipping at their heels a little bit in the East. I don't think they're in that much danger, but Montreal, like if Montreal too bad, too bad, too bad, too bad. I know they're too bad, but that's still like because I like Montreal to win this week. So like they're they're only going to be one back if they. I don't know. I like I like Toronto here in a feisty game. Yeah. So Jim, what is your parlay of the week? Give me a four teamer. Whoa, a four teamer. Yeah. Well, no. If you have a different. Give me, give, give me a four. No, give no, me, no. Give me a part. Okay, okay. I can, no, I'll give you one in each game. Right. Give me, you know what? I'm going to say it. Give me the Bombers minus eight. Start us off. Bombers minus eight. Boom. Okay. Um, Give me the, oh, God, that's the risky one. Give me the over in this game. Give me the Montreal money line as the safe play. Montreal money line. And then give me the Toronto money line as the, the risky. So plus 1362. Bang. Jim's parlay is Montreal plus 185. Uh, no, it's Toronto plus 185. Oh, Toronto. Excuse me. Toronto plus 185. Montreal minus 190. Over 46 and a half in the Redbacks BC Lions game and the Rough Riders and Blue Bombers. He took the Blue Bombers minus the eight. My parlay. Are you ready for this one, Jimbo? Are you Lay ready to me. see how? Lay it on me. All right. Let's start off. We're going to take over 52 and a half here. I like that. We're going to take the Elks plus 144. Hate it. We're going to take the plus seven. Love and we're going to take the over 48. I don't hate this. Uh, except for that Elks play, I like this. And, man, I hope the Elks win. But I just, I'm not, I don't fade trends. I don't. I can't in, in good faith do that. So my mine is Saskatchewan and the Blue Bombers over 48 and a half. Redbacks plus seven. Elks plus 144. Argonauts stampede over 55 and a half. That is my 14 parlay for a plus 1528. Jimbo, I'd like to thank you for coming on. Why don't you tell everyone where they can find you in the social media world? You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, at XFL Gym, Twitch, everywhere. I'm everywhere at XFL Gym. Find me with this guy every uh, every Tuesday uh, for the college football tailgate, every Wednesday night for Spring Fever. And then we got to find, buddy, we got to pick another college football game to stream this month. You know what? I think we need to have it where it is the first game Kansas goes for win six. I think that has to be it, right? Like once Kansas gets to five, it just has to be every Kansas game until they get to six. I I think that's what we have to do. I okay. I, really, I, I really think I, I think we can roll with that. That that's really? that's edging your seat entertainment right there. I mean, and let's be honest, if you guys if you guys tuned in, Jim and I were live on both our YouTube channels. We you gonna tout this again? You gonna tout? Hitting, we're hitting roulette winners. We're hitting Kansas live bets. We're hitting live bets and outcome of plays. And Uncle Rico <laughs> gave out. <laughs> Chase came on. He said there's a carryover. Uncle Rico on the screen right here, my friends. Put came out the race form. Just put together a little swindler of a ticket. Seventy two dollars. Came back with an ROI of thirty nine hundred for the fan. Thirty nine hundred. That's just what Jim and I do. We hand out winners when we're around. Jim, thanks for coming on. Uh, we're going to be talking Friday night and uh, possibly Saturday Friday. morning. Saturday morning, we may have to kick off a little early because Uncle Rico is the best man. We could we could kick off as early as you want. Sounds good, my friend. We'll talk soon, buddy. Later.